Good morning, everyone. It's your friend Rick. It is, okay, the Supreme Court of the United States, due process of law. The words due process of law were undoubtedly intended to convey the same meaning as by the law of the land. So in other words, when you are required due process of law, it has to be by the law of the land. Now, what is the law of the land? The law of the land, all right, is the federal constitution. You understand? So that means whatever the federal constitution says, it's really the constitution, says that you're required for due process, that's what you're uh, entitled to, okay? So let's go down. Uh, that is uh, the Magna Carta, Lord Coke, I forget about that. The constitutions which had been adopted by the several states before the formation of the federal constitution, following the language of the Great Charter more closely, generally contained the words, but by the judgment of his or her peers or the law of the land. Okay, so we already know that the Constitution affords you due process. Okay? And due process is here. The Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment was based off of the Magna Carta. I didn't get into all of that. All, all I just told you. Due pro, Fifth Amendment due process is what? The law of the land. The United States Constitution, which means you cannot have your life, liberty, and property. Really, what we're concerned about is liberty and property. All right? Uh, there's nobody getting killed li literally by child support. Deprived unless by due process under the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. All right? So what we're concerned with besides, we all know what property is. Property is your wages. All right? So most of you are having your wages stolen by these income withholding orders or your bank account, okay? Another, another way that we're being restrained by these fake court orders and these fake proceedings is our liberty, all right? Now, liberty is defined. The way the, uh, the, the way a writ of habeas corpus is used is to... Uh, to show that your, your liberty is being restrained unconstitutionally, okay? Meaning that, you know, uh, you're being restrained without due process, without a hearing, okay? You're walking down the street, somebody takes you, throws you in a van, you end up in a, in a jail cell, and you don't know why, okay? Or let's say you were thrown in a jail cell for a long period of time, but you never had a, a, a hearing. You have to have a hearing, a proceeding of some sort. All right? <clears throat> but also liberty is not merely freedom. All right? It's not just you being restrained in a jail cell or something. But also the right of the individual to contract, right, to engage in any of the common occupations of life. All right? Your driver's license is suspended, restrained. Your bank account is restrained. You can't access your funds. You can't pay your bills. Okay? To acquire useful knowledge, to marry, to establish a home and bring up children, to worship God according to the dictates of his own conscience, and generally to enjoy those privileges long recognized all right so right to establish a home and bring up children the writ of habeas corpus uh even though we're not doing a video on writ of habeas corpus but i'm just showing you guys that there are a bunch of you out there with these uh with your custody concerns a writ of habeas corpus could be used for that okay so right here is a supreme court decision that's saying that 
uh, liberty is not just being jailed. These pieces of crap in the clerk's office, in you know, I know here in New York, I have one of my man right now, Keishon, is going through this right now, and they're definitely not taking his paperwork right now because they know what it says, and they know it's a remedy for the child support. So, like, they're busting his chop because he's not filing on the procedures. Okay, you can't be obstructed by procedures, and procedures are for attorneys. You are not an attorney. You are a man or a woman. You don't have to be a legal professional, and you don't have to abide by statutes. Okay? Statutes are procedures, really, for attorneys and corporations. Okay? But they use these statutes and, you know, and procedures as another way of keeping us out of the courts, sadly. And they make them complicated for a reason. That way you have to hire an attorney. So we try and keep it as simple as possible. So what you would do is, this is a nice case law here. I already have it in my uh, memorandum of laws, and I have it in my uh, all of my writ of habeas corpus paperwork. To say, oh, by the way, it's not, well, you're, who's in jail? Nobody's in jail. Well, then you can't do writ habeas corpus. No, you're, you're, you're incorrect. And I also have the case law in New York, People v. Shieldhouse, that says, a writ of habeas corpus does not have, you don't have to file an appeal. That's another thing. They'll tell you you got to file an appeal first. That's not true. A writ of habeas corpus can be filed at any time. So let's say you were, uh, you were jailed because uh, you weren't given due process. You have to wait for the appeal, which could take two or three years. No, you file a writ of habeas corpus. If it's a glaring, you know, like a glaring uh, uh, deprivation of due process. We'll, we'll leave that alone for now. All right. All right, so the Fifth Amendment, now we got the Fourteenth Amendment. Right, I'm not going to get into all this stuff about the Fourteenth Amendment. It'll work for us, and I'll tell you why. As you see here in red, I have no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. There are a lot of people, they don't want to be called citizens. I agree with that, you know, but... Uh, this can work for us because um, a lot of these child support uh, laws in every state, they don't afford you a trial by jury. Okay, and a trial by jury is very necessary because of here. Uh, the 14th Amendment, oh, I'm going to get to the next, I'll get to the next window and I'll explain why, but uh, the 14th Amendment provides uh, equal protection and an impartial adjudicator, okay? But what this means is that they cannot, they cannot create a state law. Well, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, uh, you know, law one, two, three. All right, I wrote that down here. If you want to see, I have uh, notes down here on the bottom. All right, state law one, two, three, or code one, two, three. And I wrote, some of you guys might not realize, I'm only using this as an example. It says child support proceedings do not require a trial by jury. How many times do you hear that all the time? Well, guess what? You're going to say, well, the 14th Amendment says I'm, that you cannot create a state law or procedure or you know, statute that deprives me of my rights under the law of the land, the Constitution. So the 6th Amendment is for um, trial by jury for crimes. 7th Amendment is for... Uh, Cases at common law of $20 or more, a, a dispute between you and somebody else of more than $20, you're entitled to a trial by jury. So is not your, your, your ex, the your baby mother, or the child support agency or whatever, they're claiming you owe child support? Well, we know it's more than $20, and you're entitled to a trial by jury. Here's another reason. The due process clause this is under the 14th Amendment as well. The due process clause is exactly like a similar provision of the Fifth Amendment. What happened was, I, I explained to you guys earlier, uh, when the slaves were freed, 
the federal law, the states under their own laws were creating their own laws that kept people uh, enslaved. Uh, they were doing, um, oh my God, what, they, what were they doing? Uh, uh, they were taking children and they were uh, putting them in, uh, oh, I should know, it's, it's in the movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, The Free State of Jones, if you want to look into it. Um, you know, a lot of my uh, subscribers are African American, a lot of you guys might be interested in this. And they were taking the children and they were putting them like in a school or some type of training camp. <laughs> but they were really slaves, okay? That's what they were doing. So they weren't technically slaves, but they were like supposedly um, teaching them, uh, they were civilizing them or something like that. But they were, what they were doing was still working in the fields. So they were still enslaved. So the, the federal, they made the 14th Amendment to prevent that, okay? Um, the Fifth Amendment, which only restricts federal government, it states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, property without due process of law. Usually due process refer, refers to fair procedures. However, the Supreme Court has also used this part of the Fourth Amendment to prohibit certain practices outright. For instance, the court has ruled that the due process clause protects rights that are not specifically listed in the Constitution, such as a right to privacy and sexual relations. Well, not just that as well, guys. Uh, there's a case, Troxel versus Granville, and... Uh, I should have had it posted here, but I didn't know we're going to go in this direction. Um, but it says you have a right to raise your children. So if the state is not providing you any social services or any welfare, they have no business interfering in your life. All right? So this goes with the CPS, and this goes with child support. Well, they're, out of, they're so out of control right now because the states need money. They are so out of control that they are forcing anybody getting divorced Okay, two parents working, they're forcing them into child support. Their, their whole attitude is, well, you got to pay child support. You have a duty to support your child. Yeah, I do, but you don't have any right to tell me how to do it. That's what this means right here. You have a right to privacy. Okay, what if you, uh, I made this point before, but, you know, what if you live in a rural area, right? What if you go out and hunt? What if you're able to provide a winter, uh, you know, winter, uh, food by, sh you know, shooting a deer or shooting some other, you know, animal. Is, is your child, is your child going to starve? No. But according to the state, you got to provide a certain amount of money. Well, we know why, because the state uh, pimps off that money, okay? All the state is is a pimp. Okay, uh, Due process, uh, due process clause to extend to the Bill of Rights of states over time to a practice known as incorporation. All right, let's forget about that. But also it means impartial uh, adjudication. Now, the reason why I brought up why, another reason why you should demand a trial by jury is uh, these fake judges and the judges, they are not impartial because by them... Um, creating a support order, they are automatically receiving wholly or, you know, partially, uh, they're receiving a gift or they're receiving compensation because the money from the federal government is deposited into the state treasury and paying their salaries or pensions. So for a judge or a fake child, you know, a fake judge, it benefits them to force as many people into child support as possible by creating support orders and creating income withholding orders. So they cannot remain impartial. It's impossible. That's the reason why a trial by a jury as well. Okay. All right. So that's it. I'm just going to wait. We got here. All right. Uh, this is the equal protection that I was talking about. I'm going to shut the video down. You guys see, you guys can pause, watch as I try to make it as simple as possible. This is what due process is. So when you're in these bullshit proceedings, this is the reason why you have to demand your trial by jury. This is the reason why, and if they say they don't, say that I want to be transferred to a venue, I want to be transferred to a court of record that proceeds according to common law. I had one guy do that, and these, these pieces of shit said, well, uh, you waited too long. That's another reason why you guys got to learn this stuff. 
That's why I can't be there with you. That's another reason why there's no such thing as a silver bullet. You have to know this stuff because they're there to trip. So, so one of my guys goes, all right, I put in a change of venue, and they denied it saying, well, uh, you, you took too long to ask. <laughs> no, you, there's no time limit. Because the, if you're asking for a change of venue, it's because the court lacked jurisdiction. If you're not, if they're not providing, if that's not a court that can provide a trial by jury, it's a court that lacks jurisdiction. So being that we could challenge jurisdiction at any time, they don't like us to notice, there is no time limit on that. Okay, well, we're going to go a little bit slowly. I'm going to start implementing, uh, you know, these... Um, this, uh, what do you call it, PowerPoint. I used to teach my, uh, I used to teach like this in the police academy. So I figured, let me go back to this. A lot of you guys are having a, a difficult time grasping this stuff. I know this is not easy stuff. All right, so that's it. I'm going to close the video down. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Oh, happy, if I don't make a video, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And I'll talk to you guys later.